Hi, I'm Reva with Quality Sewing and Vacuum, and I organize a special events for Quality. And today we're gonna go over the really unique and really special features of your XP2 or Solaris 2. So well, there's tons of stuff that these machines do, but we're just gonna take a little bit of time today and go over some really awesome unique features. So let's take a look. We're going to start with sewing. So in sewing, one thing that you may love about your XP2 is the fact that it helps you sew even better. So one of the things that they have on this machine that is not on any other machine is the fact that it has this little guy right here and this is the guideline marker. So when I touch that, it opens up a screen and it's going to allow me to have projected guidelines right on the surface of my fabric. So if you take a look on the fabric right now, there's a red and a green line. And the red line is straight in front of my needle and the green line is a quarter inch away. And you can change the positions of those. You can even adjust the colors if you want to. So I have my main line turned on. And I can also come in here and choose a subsequent line, which is what I have my seam allowance at. And then that is going to allow me to see where I want my edge of fabric to be, if it's doing a, a seam allowance for a quilt, or if I want it to be bigger, I can do that. You can even make it be up to oh, about a, just over an inch away from the sewing line. So that's really very, very helpful. Now, it does more than just the straight side-by-side -side line. Let's take a look. It also does an angled line. So if I turn on the angled line, you can see here that it has a 90 degree line that points out to the left side of the needle. That's perfect for when you're stitching along and you want to turn a perfect 90 degree corner when you rotate your fabric. So the 90 degree line is really awesome when you want to turn a perfect 90 degree corner. So as you're stitching along, when you're ready to pivot your fabric, I usually stop with my needle down and just pivot and then it's going to line right back up and you can see that you're going to get a perfect uh, 90 degree corner on your project. It's great for pockets, for table runners, all sorts of things there. Then if we choose Another one, you could do a 60 degree uh, angle. And a 60 degree angle is perfect if you're putting together wedges of stars. And those are perfect because you can just line up the, the points in there and stitch them without having to mark your seams. If you've ever worked with Y seams, you know, and stop, I'm gonna go back and start with a 60 degree. Okay, I'm gonna just do it on the side because it wasn't lining up. You can also choose to have a 60 degree line. And if you take a look over here, I have the projected guidelines with a 60 degree angle. The red will be the stitching line and the green is gonna be where the edge of your fabric is or the shape. So if you've ever done a star quilt block where you've had the pieces that you need to have them line up exactly and you're supposed to do that Y seam where you don't sew all the way, it's always hard to know exactly where that is. Well now it's no problem because you can see exactly where you need the edge of your fabric to be and you don't have to do any marking or pre-measuring. Now my favorite one is the 45 degree angle. Let me show you how fun this one is. Now, if you've ever done any type of quilting, you've probably sewn, chain uh, stitched and sewn squares together and you stitch to make triangles. Well, take a look at this. I can arrange this so the angle is perfect so I can stitch right down the center and I don't have to mark my blocks. Another fun thing to do, which is very useful, is if you're gonna be doing binding and you need to have your binding pieces put together, you can angle this so you can stitch your perfect uh, mitered uh, stitch so your fabric is right together. So when you open it up, you've got your perfect binding, no more marking. Now, another thing that's pretty cool is that we can turn on a grid. So this grid is adjustable again, over an inch and down to less than a quarter of an inch, but you can change the size and then you don't have to pre-mark your fabric for doing a um, channel quilting or if you want rows of stitches right uh, parallel with each other, you have the markings right on the machine. So the guideline markers are really awesome, but we have more to talk about. One thing I wanna share with you is a feature of the machine that I actually happen to love a lot. This is the thread power. And this 
it goes compact for travel, but you can raise this on up, pull it up, and get our tower, and it magnetizes right in the lid of the machine so you can have a nice, tall thread tower. So you can use spools of thread or even big cones of thread, even the big, huge cones of thread. So whatever you wanna use, you can use on this machine. Now, another fun feature, and I'm gonna thread this machine up really fast. Another fun feature of this machine is that it has something called the end stitch placement sticker. And I'm gonna show you how that works. All right, so we get him threaded. And since you all have one of these machines, I know you absolutely love the automatic needle threader. It's the best, isn't it? Okay, so what we're gonna do with our, so these are the snowball stickers. What they are is they're positioning stitch stickers for the machine to know right where you want the row of stitches to end. So I'm gonna take one of these little stickers and I'm gonna place it on my fabric. So on my fabric, I've drawn a line and I've drawn a place where I want that stitch to end. Now, of course, you're not gonna use ballpoint pen on your projects at home, it's not advised, but that's what I used here. And I'm just gonna stick this little sticker right to the side of where I have where I want that to end. So now let's go pick a stitch and then I'll show you how awesome that works. So we're gonna go into decorative stitches and I'm gonna just find one that's really fun. Let's see, this one's cute. I'm gonna use that one. This is one of my favorite stitches. And then all you need to do is ask it to turn on the end point function. So there's two different ways you can ask this one to um, start. So I've chosen one of my favorite decorative stitches and now I'm gonna come in here and just tell it I wanna use the end point function. There's two different ways that we can have it end. We can have it end with a full repeat or just a partial and just end right wherever it may land. Now the cool thing about using the end point function and the sticker like this is that you can place that sticker anywhere. It doesn't have to be right close to the needle. This fabric could be a whole king size sheet and I put the sticker on the end of the sheet so that way when I get close to there it knows when to stop sewing. I'm just using a small piece of fabric here, which is absolutely fine. You can do whatever works for you. So I'm gonna pop my fabric in there and I'm going to just close that and it's on. I can see because my little icon is lit up there and I'm just gonna start sewing. And when it gets to the end here, it's gonna stop on that line, which is really pretty fabulous. Now you can use this endpoint sticker function if you're doing a corner on a uh, table runner or anything like that. And you notice that the machine has slowed down. That's because it has the camera and the projection line has found that sticker and is taking a look at it and it is making sure that it's going to stop at the right time. So it's really close. You don't have to have the, the sticker positioned off the side. You can have it right in front or you can have it on the left. The sticker just needs to be within an inch and a half of the needle. All right, so now we've got that done. And we have ended right at our sticker location. So now you can get absolutely perfect decorative stitches just with the touch of a button and a snowball. So that snowball is really fun, but now we're gonna take a look at another really awesome feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the snowball, turn him off, close, and let's take a look at some fun decorative stitches. Maybe I want to go over to this category here and take a look at the stitches that are in here. That one's pretty. Have you ever chosen a decorative stitch but you don't know if it's the right size for your project because maybe the machine's talking in millimeters and you only know inches? Well. That's all well and good, but how about being able to see your stitch 
visually right on the machine. So I'm gonna put my fabric under here so you can see what I'm doing. And there's this little icon right here. It's an inverted cone. It looks to me like a party hat and it's more fun. So I, I like party hat. I'm gonna go with that. So this is, our, I touch a little party hat and it turns on our projector. Now the projector shows me right on the screen of the machine, or I'm sorry, not the screen. It shows you the screen here, but it shows you right on the sewing area exactly where that stitch is gonna sew out and exactly the size that it's going to be. So you see there's some buttons on here or some illuminated buttons. It's using the projector. These are controls so we can work with that stitch. And this is a little stylus that actually is a bit magic. If you notice when I push that button, a little light goes off and that's when it communicates with the machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this leaf a little bit bigger. So as I touch that, did you see how that's making it longer? Well, let's make it maybe a little bit wider. Well, it's a, it ticked at me, that means it's as big as it can go. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's see if I can get in here around the camera. I don't know that I can very well, but I can make them narrower. Can you see how that got a little bit narrower? You're gonna see really good from your machine. Now, as we're doing this, make sure you pause and stop and try some of the things and then come back and watch some more. So you can do that at, as much as you want to. Okay. All right, but the fun button is way over here. And this button right here is a button that's gonna bring up the stitch menu right on the screen. Can you see that? There's different stitches on the sides. So we're gonna go ahead and touch that arrow and it's gonna progress us through the menu so you can audition different stitches right on your fabric and you don't have to guess what they're gonna look like. Now, if the color doesn't look right to you because this is blue, and maybe your fabric's blue so you can't see it, you can actually change the illuminated color to red or gold or black so it really shows up on your fabric. So if that's the stitch we like, we can say set and we're ready to start sewing. It's really pretty cool. So now that we've gone through some of the cool features that are in the sewing section, we're gonna go over and look at our embroidery. Okay, now embroidery is really fun. I love doing embroidery, but one of the biggest things that we struggle with is getting the design on the project in exactly the right location. Yeah, this machine's got you covered. So instead of putting the fabric in the hoop and going, oh, it's crooked, try again, rehoop, it's crooked. Don't even worry about it. What we're gonna do is take our project and give ourselves a horizontal and a vertical line of where you want your design to be. And the cross of those two lines is the center of your design. And I put this cute little sticker on it. It's a snowman sticker. And you get a whole sheet with your machine and hopefully you've taken out these out and used them. I know a lot of times you hear, I didn't even know what that sticker was for. So now you're gonna learn. So you're gonna put that sticker right in the intersection of those lines. And if you notice, he has a little belly button and that belly button is the dead center of where your design is. And our snowman has a little head compared to his belly and the head is the up for your embroidery design. If he was leaning that way, the up would be facing that way, right? So we have the up going this way in this particular case and I have him positioned there. So now, since you have it all on your garment, now you can hoop and you don't have to stress on whether it be straight or not. So in the, this is the same size shirt. And because of, if you're doing garments or you're doing things, a lot of times it's nearly impossible to get a hoop on the machine, or I'm sorry, get the hoop on the project so it's straight because you've got buttons you gotta work around and everything like that. So having your line with your snowman sticker, you don't have to worry about having your hoop and your fabric coordinated and straight, okay? So I'm gonna take this guy. Well, actually, I need to take this guy. So we're gonna um, work with him in the embroidery. I'm gonna touch Disney and I'm gonna bring up Disney. Now this is a Luminaire 2, it's a brother Luminaire, so it does have Disney. And if you have the Solaris 2, you don't have Disney, but you do have other beautiful designs. So I'm gonna take this little, um, our little shirt and put the hoop on the machine. Okay. Oh, and did you notice? I couldn't even put him on the right way because it's such a little shirt. It's even upside down. So the head's facing this way, right? So I'm gonna choose my design. I'm gonna choose Mickey's head and he's so cute, isn't he? So I'm gonna say set. Oh, 
oh, maybe you can't see that. Let's look at one of the new features in the machine. I can now zoom in up to 400% on the machine. So you're gonna love that when you're positioning things on your machine. So let's go back maybe to a little bit smaller there. So here's our Mickey, and we want him to be positioned exactly where our snowman is. So all we need to do is go to embroidery, and we touch layout, and there's a button right here that looks like a snowman. So that's what we're gonna do, is we're gonna touch that snowman and we're gonna ask it to scan. And what the machine is gonna do is use the built-in camera to look for where that snowman sticker is. And then it's gonna move the design so the center of the design is right over the belly button of the snowman. It will even flip the design upside down and rotate it so it sits correctly based on where you want your design to be. Now look at that, there he is. He's all cute, he's hanging upside down, but then what you get is a perfectly stitched out design that is in the right spot and you're happy as a clam. Now if that was not enough of fun with embroidery, we have another feature on this machine which is so awesome. Now, this is a little baby onesie that I've already embroidered a cute little applique on. Now, you're not gonna hoop your, your baby onesie like this because if you sew something with it like this, you can't get it over the kid's head, so don't do that. But I just did it because I wanna show you this. So I'm gonna put this hoop on the machine because maybe you have, you've done some cute little things like this or you have a garment or a project that has an embroidery or a feature on it. Maybe you have a, a sweatshirt for the kids' soccer team and you wanna put the kid's number or name on there. You can take your design and the machine's gonna let you lay it out absolutely perfect because it's gonna show you where it is. So I have my hoop on the machine and I wanna bring in a design. So let's go in here and touch embroidery and I wanna bring in some letters. And I'm gonna choose all, there's tons of different fonts and there's onboard editing of the lettering should you wanna do that. I'm gonna choose this one and I'm gonna say, uh, I don't know, I'm gonna make a medium size and I'm gonna, I did the P and then I'm gonna put lowercase U, P, P, Y. Puppy, that works for me. Um, you can also do multiple lines of text. You can left, right, center, justify, all that fun stuff. But here's my design. But where do I want this design to go? I want it to go right underneath the puppy, but but I don't know, do I have to measure it? No. I'm gonna just touch this cute little button up here that is a camera with a little piece of fabric behind it. Just touch that and say scan. And then what the machine is gonna do is use its onboard camera to take a picture of what's inside the hoop area and display it right on the screen over here so you can place your design exactly where you want it to go. That's cool. Is that not neat? Takes all the worry and guesswork out of having your design right where you want it to go. So there it is. I'll zoom in so we can see it because remember we can go up to 400%. So I'm gonna take that and just drag my puppy down. The word, the puppy stays there and that's perfect. That's where I want it to go. So I say close and I'll take it back down to a smaller size. Now, is that exactly where I want it to go? Let's take a look. So I'm gonna to go to embroidery, and look, there's my party hat again. And remember, that turns on your projector. So we're gonna to touch that little party hat and take a look at what happens right over here on the, the, our design here. Let me scooch that down, see if we can see him. Okay, I can't see him because it has a black background and my lettering is black. So maybe what if I turn the background to white? Look, you can see the puppy. That's awesome. So now I know that the word is gonna land exactly right there when I sew. Now, if you're using a different color fabric, you can use the gray option. So there's a light dark and a, um, and a medium tone for your background so it will show up on any color of fabric. So that's gonna get you the perfect embroidery. You know exactly where it is and you know exactly what you got. So there's no excuse why you can't do lots of fun things. Okay, another fun thing in embroidery. Oh. I know you're having fun, I am too. I hope you've been practicing. There's a, a really awesome feature in this machine. I wanna show you how to create it. But um, what it is, it's a uh, quilt sashing. So if you've ever had a quilt and you wanna put a border around it, like here's one that's in progress right here. I have this 
embroidery piece here, a pretty embroidery design, and then I'm added, I've added the little border around the outside edge. I don't know if you can, hopefully you can see that okay. But this machine will uh, create for you the quilted sashing. So if you have a quilt up to a king size, 118 inches, you can have it put the quilted border around the entire piece and it will be perfect. I'm not good at doing quilting like this, but I'm really good at pushing the go button and because the machine does it perfect. So let me show you how the sashing feature works. We're gonna go into, we're in our embroidery section and we're gonna just touch the sashing button and you have all these wonderful choices for different sashings that you can make. And that one's really pretty, or maybe I wanna do this one. It doesn't matter, you can pick, there's many, you can spend days doing this. So I'm gonna to touch one and hit set. Now what it wants to know is if you, is it all small enough so it can fit in just one hoop, or do you need it to be multiple hoops? This one, I needed multiple hoops, it doesn't fit in one hoop. So what it wants to know is how wide how wide is the area that you need to be quilted? And then also it's gonna to wanna to know how tall the area is that it needs to be quilted. So remember, you're gonna measure how wide you need your border to be and how tall you need the border to be. And then it also wants to know how wide you want that border to be. So let's pretend um, that this is uh, 17 inches wide. I touch set, then it goes to number two, that's the height. And this one happens to be, let's say, let's say it's 42 inches tall and set, and then let's say we want it to be 2.5 inches in width. So we say set, and then we just touch next. And look, it's already created all the different patterns and groupings of patterns that you need to create this design. And we touch memory, and it automatically puts it into the memory of the machine. And there is our design. So we can just touch that, and it brings up the whole grouping of all the designs that are gonna be used in that pattern to make our whole sash quilt. You'll notice that the very first one is a completed rectangle, and that's the one we want to choose because then it's gonna automatically take us through hooping and everything. So it starts with the corner piece, and it's gonna go clockwise. So in here, it shows us how to hoop the fabric, then it's gonna show us where to place the design, and off you go. And as soon as you're finished with one design, it's ready to link in the next one and sew it so they touch right together and it's completely seamless and it will work you all the way around the edge of your quilt until you're done. So that's lots of fun. You're gonna have to give it a try. It's really easy because the machine's gonna walk you through every single step. But I wanna show you one more type of sashing feature. So let's go here and it's cancel. Let's go back and take a look at our quilted sashings because there's a brand new feature in the um, Luminaire 2 and the Solaris 2, and that's hexagons. Hexagons are so popular. So how this works, it works very similar to what I just showed you, but it's a little bit different. It only needs one measurement with the width of the design. So what it wants to know is how far from tip to tip the inside of your hexagon is. So maybe it is uh, 20 inches and you need it to be three inches wide set. Then next, and it's gonna break it apart and it's gonna walk you through building that on your fabric just like the other one. It shows you where to how to hoop your fabric and where the stitch is gonna sew out. And you can tell it, no, nope, that doesn't match my fabric and you just, adjust it and it leads you through step by step. So that's really fun. Okay. So another real fun that thing that we're gonna talk about is the IQ Designer or Design Center. Depends on if you have a Solaris or a Luminaire, what that's called. But it's right down here at the very bottom. And this is where we're gonna get these beautiful fills and decorative quilting. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So let me show you how that works. We're gonna to touch my Design Center. And if I want to do so what you're gonna, on this little design right here, on this quilt, you can actually scan this and you'll be able to see where your petals are and you'll be able to fill them with a decorative stitch. So let's put this on the machine and then we'll scan it and you're gonna have so much fun doing things like this. I love working with panels. Panels can be so much fun because you can be creative on how you quilt them with all the different patterns. Or even, I do free motion quilting on my um, embroidery machine through Design Center. 
All right, so now we've got the hoop on the machine and we're ready to play. So I'm gonna go ahead and touch the leaf right up at the top and this is your button that lets the machine know to use the built-in camera to scan. So I'm just gonna scan the image. Look at that, it's so smart. It told me that I didn't have the little lever on my uh, hoop closed all the way. I love it when it helps me like that. So I'm gonna scan that and it's gonna bring up the image right on the screen of the machine. So that way we're gonna be able to trace and then fill in. So we're gonna look for a fun petal and we're gonna fill that in with some beautiful stitches. So it doesn't take very long to scan it. It has a really nice high resolution scanner in it so it's gonna give you a really clear view over here and you can even zoom in if you ever need to. All right, so now we're scanned, we're ready to go. And here it is on the background. Now I can uh, darken or brighten up that background so we can see it real well. And then we have some tools over here. We have uh, a pencil, we have, and this is our line tool. So it's a pencil for our line tool. And then we also have fill in. We're gonna start with our line tool. And I'm gonna come in here, touch my pencil, make sure it's on, and then simply draw to surround that petal right on the screen. And I'll, let me lighten that up. Can you see the, the stitch a little bit better now? Now, you can see over here I made a mess over on the side, but I don't care because I'm not gonna sew that line out. I just need it as a containment for the decorative fill that we're gonna put in. So in that case, I'm gonna go to my line choices and choose the no line option and then touch my paint bucket so that way I can change that whole line so it's not gonna stitch out. Now let's fill that in. I'm gonna go to my choices for my fill and you can use a solid fill, you could use a stipple fill, or even more fun, let's go into our decorative fills. And there are 42 different decorative fills in here that we can use and they're oh so pretty. One of my favorite ones is the little circles. There it is. No, that's not it. Where'd he go? One of my favorite ones are the little circles. Those are so cool. I'm gonna say okay, and then I'm gonna touch my paint bucket and I'm gonna fill my petal in with the circles. Then when I touch next, it's gonna come and show me a real life preview of how that's going to look. Isn't that cool? And if you're ready to sew, you can just push set and embroidery and you just push the go button and it will be exactly where you want it to be. But I wanna show you something else that's really fun on this. Let's see if I can get it in a little bit bigger for you so you can see. So there's my little bubbles. Have you ever seen the, um, the quilting where they do the, what do they call like the little coins or little, maybe it's just bubbles, I don't know, you've seen them. That's really hard to do, but it's really easy on here. So with, you, with your fills, you can make them larger, you can make them up to 200% larger, you can make them down to 50% of the original size. So maybe I wanna make them smaller and make them a little bit more compact. So I can make little circles. Now you can also angle them, but this is the fun one right here. It's called random shift. So I'm gonna turn that up and touch okay and take a look at what it does. It makes it look like a, like a riverbed or like aggregate, um, aggregate um, cement, so cool. And so that's what our petal would be. And if I touch my, um, we go to embroidery and I were to touch the little party hat, you could see right over on the screen that that's exactly where that design is gonna show up. So isn't that cool? And you did it all right with just pushing a button. So that's pretty cool. Now that's not everything that you can do in the design center. So let's go back and take a look. All right, so this is the scanning plate for the machine. And what this does is let you put artwork or drawings or pictures right on here. So I have a little picture that I've done right here or that I've drawn out or printed out in this case. And I'm gonna use the magnets that come with the machine just to pop them on there so he stays in one place. And then I'm going to slip him on right where the importer unit goes. And then we're gonna to go to my design center and I'm gonna say line design because it is a line piece and scan and okay. All right, so as it's scanning, it's actually finding what's on 
the scanning plate here and it is going to, it's using the camera and then it's going to put it right on the screen of the machine over here. And you can use this to create all sorts of different designs. You can have a drawing. I've taken fabric and had that uh, be on here so that way you can create a quilting pattern that matches your fabric just exactly, which is pretty cool. Okay, so that was the last pass and it's gonna bring up the design right on the screen and all I need to do is just crop around the part of the design I want to keep. And of course it shows you the, um, where the magnets are too, but we can erase those in a minute. So there I've got them cropped and I can just go okay and then it's gonna bring up the design and it's gonna turn it into art. So I'm good with that, I can say set, and then I'm gonna get my eraser out and I'm gonna erase those lines that are around that where the magnets were. If I had placed the magnets outside the area a little bit more, you wouldn't have seen them. Okay, so now I've got that, let me just turn that off. And now I have my design ready to go. So if I want to, I can come in and choose a decorative fill, and then I can come in and I can place that right in one spot or two spots or wherever I want it to go and you can create your own embroidery design. That's really cool. So take a look at another thing that I did. Um, this is a photocopy of a recipe card that my mom had. It was actually not even a card, it was just a piece of paper with her peanut brittle recipe scrawled on it. And I actually have no idea where any of her other recipes went, but this is the only really one that I have left of my mother. So I took that and I scanned that and I had the machine create a perfect replica of my mom's handwriting with her, her recipe on it. And then I used the built-in lettering to create the keepsake. It's perfect keepsake for my children and for my brother. So we have a little memory of my mom. So thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you've had some fun going through some of the really awesome unique features of your uh, Solaris 2 and your uh, Luminaire 2 from Brother. If you have any other questions and you live in the Western Washington area, we would love to have you come into one of our stores. You can also find um, us on the internet at qualitysewing.com and if you want to talk to someone and you have questions and you live outside the area, you'll see our, our contact number right below this post.